I was wrong in doing what I did. No, 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 no. Are you listening? Hang on, I can't even catch my breath. Hang on. Sean here, and I just recorded an 18 minute freaking video that I had to delete because there was static in the background that I didn't hear until I was done recording. Freaking fan in the other room. I listened to the latest Blue Boy call and it highlighted how dangerous Lauren Armstrong is. One of the things that makes him dangerous, as we know, and we talked about self-concept, self-image, is that he believes how he sees himself on the inside is projected on the outside to everyone else and they just can't see what a great guy he is. He doesn't understand the concept that he lives in a capitalist society. He lives in a world where power, money, fame, respect, how other people see you, that's going to get you where you need to go. He says he doesn't care about any of that. He doesn't care about money. But when you take away money from Lorne, he really does have nothing to offer. Nothing. Women can forgive a lot. Men can forgive a lot. They want to get what they need, even if it's just enough. If they can get that from you, and you're able to provide them with a comfortable life on top of that, that's pretty much all anybody can ask for. Your emotional needs met, your material needs met, and hopefully, if you two have chemistry, and this is important to me, your physical needs met. Imagine this scenario, because of course, Lauren thought that he and Casey were headed to a relationship because just like he told Debbie, well, see, because we was in a relationship before, so I deserve a fair chance. Lauren thought that because there was some fake relationship, even though Casey made it clear, she called him back to tell him the truth, which is hilarious anyway, because we know what's going on, but Captain Clueless does not. He seemed shocked when she said, we're not together, Lauren. We, we were never together, We've never even met you. So this scares me. Say there's a woman in his area. She has money. She's also attractive. Now, Lauren's in his 50s and the catfish end. And he has to look at himself and he has to look around and he looks at his debt. And I think he views his debt as meaningless. He has no wife, no kids, as we know, no future, no prospects, no job, but he has no wife and no kids, no relatives that are going to have to take that debt over when he dies. He is just killing time until he kicks the bucket. He'll use whatever money that comes in to do what he wants and do the minimum for what he needs. And when he dies, all that debt goes away. It just gets written off. So I don't have to worry about it, because when I die, it'll be gone. That's what Lauren is thinking. He's in his 50s, and he has to take a look at his life. He doesn't have a woman. He doesn't have any money. And those are two things that I think all men or another man, sex, I hate having to do that. You know what I mean, a partner. A partner that you love and respect and that cherishes you just the same amount that you do them. Lauren sees a woman on a billboard a realtor, he meets her somewhere, and then he recognizes her face. Let's use that. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I see, oh, you're a realtor? He sees her at a booth at a whatever. Oh, you're a realtor? Yeah, I like to build houses. Oh, that's nice. Are you in the market for a home? Uh, well, not really, not right now. I may make my own home. Oh, well, that's cool. All right, nice to meet you. That's all Lauren needs, my, Michael Jordan. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. That's all he would need. He would see her face on a billboard. Now, I know this is going a little out there, but just bear with me. There's a phone number. Now, she would have forgotten this guy because she would have probably talked to hundreds of people that day. But I think most women who would talk to a guy and get the vibe off of him and feel uneasy. I mean, look at the face in this picture. He's the guy that if you're in a grocery store aisle, and he glances your direction. You're grabbing your children and going to the other aisle. And you'll come back to whatever you needed. You would probably remember how you felt. What he looked like. But let's say she didn't. And Lauren says, well, there's a phone number. And he gets this bright idea. Because we know he has these cockamamie schemes. 
these Wiley Coyote schemes, he's going to call her, and he's going to do it under the guise that he's going to meet her to look at a house. They get to the house. Lauren pretends he's interested. They go inside, and he starts telling her, well, you know, you remember me, me, you know, over at the fair, wherever it was, the street fair, the downtown festival. Oh, no. And she starts to realize this guy's not here to buy the house because now he's talking about feeling chemistry between us and that we were destined to be together and he thinks that we should have a fair shot. I think any woman, any rational woman, would try to get the hell out of there. And maybe that would scare Lauren. He'd be like, oh, crap, I'm in deep trouble. No, 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 I'm just kidding or whatever. But I can see him doing that because that woman would have a little bit of pain. She would be attractive. She would have money. Lauren realizes he has none of those things. And he can offer none of those things. So he needs a partner that can do that. I'm not saying Lauren would force himself on her. I'm saying he would never give up. Notes on the cars, calls to her work, maybe a personal visit. Oh, hey, uh, and she's hiding in her office. Is, is, is Leslie here? No, no, she's not here right now. Oh, well, I can just wait till she gets back. Tell me you can't see him doing this. This created, rela- create relationships, this created relationship in his fucking head where he would believe that they were destined to be together. I think it would be scary for any woman. And that's why Casey is so appealing. Well, you know what I mean. The character. Attractive. Famous. Has a lot of money. All the things that Lauren wants, but denies that he wants because he knows he'll never get it. He thinks he's going to go out to California. Actually, he thinks she's going to come to Cornville see what a great guy he is and say, you know, Lauren, I think we're destined to be together. And Lauren would be like, you know, one movie would cover these debts, you know? One movie would pay up all my debts. We could build that summer home we've always wanted. Lauren, I never wanted a summer home. You were the one who talked about it. Well, you know, you, you want it too. I mean, I could see it. All of the things he campaigns against. The fact that this guy compared himself to Donald Trump, his success and fame and everything he's accomplished, Even if you don't like him, you cannot take away the fact that this man has achieved things that other people would only dream of. Even Alex Jones, who he went ballistic on, everything he's accomplished, yes, he's a nut job. Yes, he goes too far. But he's famous. Even if you think he's infamous, the money he had, the channel, everything he did, he worked for. You can't take that away from people like that. I'm just talking about people that Lauren has mentioned, okay? I'm not some right-wing nut I'm just people who Lauren has mentioned. Even Biden, who I think right now is wandering around clueless in this world. But look at what he's accomplished. Hate him or love him. Hate those other people or love him. You have to appreciate the fact that they... I don't appreciate... You have to appreciate the fact that they worked very hard to get where they are. Lauren, he doesn't work hard. I still think his septic business was him taking care of his relatives. I don't know if I've said this in this video yet, but I read Phil Jackson's book, Maverick. And I think it was in that book, or it may have been another book. It's a quote by him. You're only as successful as your last success. He thinks he had a momentary flash of success, if it was even a success. Lauren has always had things handed to him, where he lives, what he gets. So he doesn't have a lot of money that he needs to spend on anything. So that would all be extra money to Lauren. He might have felt rich. And of course we know Lauren doesn't go off facts and logic. He goes off of emotion. So he felt rich. So he was rich. And that was pretty much his only success because everything else has been a colossal failure. The fact that this guy still thinks he's going to get off probation is insane. And those two people who reportedly have befriended him can do more damage to society than they think. Let's say they get to know him and they're enjoying the fact that they can say, oh yeah, we're talking to Lauren Armstrong. Lauren convinces them because who knows, maybe they become real friends. Maybe they haven't been around him enough to where they just want to jump off a cliff And they go to probation. Now, thankfully, they wouldn't listen, but they go to probation and they say, 
He's really a good guy. You've got him all wrong. We've met him. We've seen him when no one's looking, and he's just a great guy. We'd like to submit these letters or whatever to say that Lorne needs to get off probation. He can be a contributing member of society. Now, hopefully, I know probation said, well, we can't, take, we can't talk about his case, but he can't pass rape class, and he won't admit to anything he's done, and he would be danger to anyone once he gets off probation. And again, I stand by the fact that if Lorne gets close to his 60s and he's not off probation, I think he's just going to stop caring. Well, you know, I'm going to be dead soon anyway. I may as well go out and do whatever. Most people have a dream like going to Iceland, like I do, or they want to go to Scotland or France or wherever they want to go. Travel the world. Not Lorne. I think Lorne's dreams, I think his dreams are to drink as much as he wants and to finally have that little child bride. That little, oh, he's so gross. That little girl to control that he's always wanted. But Lorne is... He has that personality. It just encourages him to be addic addicted to things. He would do it once and want it more and more and more. Until he finally got caught. Because we know Lauren doesn't think he's a criminal unless he gets caught. The perfect storm for a formula for failure for Lauren is I'm gonna. He always tells these catfish women, well, I'm gonna have some money. You know, have some time. I'm going to have some money. I'm going to have a good job. I'm just, I'm waiting on everyone else. See, I'm doing everything I can, but I can't do anymore because they won't get off their butts. That's all he has to say. That's all he has to do to convince himself that life doesn't suck. His mom, Casey brought up such a good point about his mom raising degenerate kids. Lauren doesn't talk about his other siblings. We've mentioned that. But he loves to talk about Roy being the screw-up of the family. But at least Roy is not a virgin. But Lauren's mom, who he sees as the queen of all queens. To say that, well, she doesn't have any money. She's never made anything of herself. But she's still the greatest person in the world. It's admirable to see your mother as such a wonderful person. But as you get older, hopefully, if you have any kind of sanity... You start to see the cracks and the people that you used to think were heroes. Not necessarily your parents, but you can see it in your parents. And your everything comes into focus. All the stuff that happened as a kid that you now see the signs of. You're like, oh, I know why that happened now. Oh, that one time this happened. Now I see why it did. It's never come into focus for Lauren. And I don't think it ever will. I think you'll just look at his mom, the only woman who's ever tolerated him, and truly dealt with him. I don't even know about Aunt Sharon or whoever else is in his life, how long they tolerated him constantly crying, I'm doing the best I can. After a while, if you have a friend who's constantly whining and complaining and crying and everyone else is out to get him and they're a victim, you move on. You avoid their phone calls. You just stop communicating with them all together and you may not even catch yourself doing it. It just happens. One of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the latest Casey call is when Casey says, what if I call probation? What if I call them and I ask them, are you ever going to get off lifetime probation or lifetime parole or whatever? Lauren doesn't understand what the word lifetime means. He thinks that by breaking all of the terms and conditions they set upon him, but still believing he's a good person and I helped an old lady across the street, that's enough to take him off of lifetime probation and parole. He's so dumb. I helped the guy take his garbage and he didn't even ask for it. He equates that the same as he equates somebody becoming president of the United States. Jesus, man. How do you even help somebody like that? This is why he will not get off of probation and parole. Yeah, I did what I did, but what about those other people who actually did it, huh? He wouldn't understand that the reason he didn't do it is that he was caught. But the fact that he thought he was going to get off lifetime is insane. 
And the fact that he would tell Casey, well, of course they're going to tell you I'm not, because it's their job. That's what they have on paper. You just don't understand. Those people who are in control, they'll give you valid reasons and logical reasons, and they'll tell you the truth, but it's not really the truth, because it's their job to say that. My God, the insanity. Lauren will die alone and penniless. I don't know if anyone will show up. I've already paid for my headstone. I paid for my burial. I paid for everything else. I just wanted to get it out of the way so my children don't have to take that burden on. Lauren is going to have to have somebody in his family pay for him to be buried. It's not cheap. It costs a lot of money to die. And I, that's really strange in a world like this, but it costs a lot of money for you to die and at least be buried with respect. Who's going to be there when he gets buried? No one. No one. Who's going to remember him? No one, except for our videos. Our videos will be his legacy because he doesn't have anything else except that he was a, a pedo caught on To Catch a Predator. My great, great, great uncle, I think it is, Jack Dempsey, I think I mentioned him before. I have several books on him and read the, where he came from and how he got to where he was. I'm adopted, you guys know that, and it's my adopted family. And I always like to think that's why I'm into combat sports so much and I train and I... Anyway, the long and short of it is, he has a legacy that has lived on since his death. Boxers still respect him. He's still studied. They still talk about him. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't equate my success with him, but Lauren does with anybody that's around him. He would walk up to St. Peter when he dies. I think I may have said this before. He walked up to St. Peter. St. Peter would say, man, you, you really lived a shit life, Lauren. And Lauren would be like, yeah, we, we had a lot of issues, you know. Well, Lauren, who are you talking about? We. Well, you know, me and, you know, you guys were the ones, you know, watching over me. I mean, we... You know, it's kind of your fault too, but we had a we had a long, long and troubled life. I think he does that with success too. People around him that are successful. Well, I'm around successful people, so that makes me a success. But there is no one else for him to be around right now. Casey would be his final stop. Actress, famous, money. And I'm married to her. I'm the guy that got to marry this. I'm Lauren Armstrong. Now she's Casey Marie Armstrong. He would see that as a huge win. Never having done anything in his life, but who he married would be a win. If you married Trailer Trash, I'm talking about the worst of the worst, I still think that Lauren, it wouldn't be enough for him. He would see her as ghetto Trailer Trash and that he was... The one that she married into his family. Whereas with Casey, he wouldn't even see it that he married into Casey's family. Which is what you say when somebody has money. Oh, he married into the Nestle family. Whoever. Lauren would see it as, well, she married into the greatest family ever. Because my mom, she loves us so much. His vision of what successful looks like is so skewed and so warped. I don't think he'll ever get it. And I don't think he'll understand what it takes for other people to see you as a success and as a good person. An unrepentant, drunken pedophile, they won't see you as a good person. You can't get out of rape class. You can't, you can't even get off probation. You don't have a job. You don't have any prospects. You don't have any future, power, money, fame. You have none of that. People aren't going to see you as successful, Lauren. So this latest call... It just opened up my eyes to his denial, his insanity, <laughs> his unwillingness to change and to be honest with himself. That's my video for today. I love you guys. Merry Christmas and I'll see you in the next one.